I'm going to kill you. Snape's words were a guttural growl, barely audible. Hmm? I'm sorry, what? I'm going to kill you. Oh, so you're going to kill me? Please do. Come now, I'm waiting. Don't do it. Don't listen to him, Snake. Stop it, kid. He's screwing with your head. Is there a problem? What are you waiting for, boy? Don't you want me to send you to join your sister? Don't! Snake! Don't do it! Have they told him he's got a gun? But Snake could no longer hear them. Snake could no longer hear anything. <laughs> Holy shit. Snake moved like a bolt of lightning. His scream echoed through the incineration chamber, full of rage and despair. Snake! Snake! Snake? Another scream filled the room. It was Lotus. She ran across the room toward Jinpei, her eyes wide with terror. Snake's ill-fated attack had loosened Ace's grip on her, and she'd made a run for it. She reached Seven and Junpei, ducked behind them. Junpei could feel his fingers on his arm, tight enough to be painful and keeping him between her and Ace. Incineration will begin in five minutes. Give me the woman. He raised the gun. I need her. Without a bracelet, I will be unable to open this door. Quickly now. I don't have time for your shenanigans. That's a brilliant word. Center of the room, Snake's body lay eerily still. He looked like a human lava, prone and vulnerable on the floor. I see. Then it would seem I have no choice. The rest of you must die as well. Fortunately, I have five bullets left. One for Junpei, another for Lotus, and the last three for that lump of an idiotic man you call Seven. I will take Lotus's body with me and leave this room. Incineration will begin in four minutes. Well, it looks as though our time together is at an end. I rather enjoyed playing with you. Goodbye. Junpei could see Ace's finger tighten. You could see it begin to squeeze down the trigger. His body tense, preparing for the catastrophic impact of hot lead against human flesh. Then it happened. Snake stood up. What? No, that, that, that's impossible! For the first time, Snake Ace's composure broke. With obvious effort, Snake lunged forward one step closer to Ace. Then another. He looked for all the world like a zombie. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. His voice was the mournful wailing of the undead. Stay, stay away from me. Get back. Stop. If you come any closer, I'll... I'll... Get away from me. Little by little, Ace was retreating. Snake didn't stop. He continued his stiff, inexorable approach. His eyes twin pools of pure fury. L listen to me. I said don't come any closer. Shit. You bastard. Ace's revolver leapt five times. Five times, the air in the incineration was split by the crack of a bullet. Snake's body twitched as five clouds of blood and torn flesh leapt into the air across his body. Fine pink mist drifted from his body and disappeared. Snake made a strange sort of choking cough. And his strength was gone. His legs crumbled and his broken and battered body slid to the floor. Incineration will begin in three minutes. The snake wasn't done. Even as the poor blood beneath him began to grow, he moved. He half crawled, half slid towards Ace. One bloody arm wrapped itself around Ace's leg, and the other grabbed his thigh with strength that should have been long gone. You son of a bitch! You're a monster! How did the other I suppose the prosthetic arm must have been somewhat useful? Get off me! Let me go! 
Damn you! He kicked at Snake with his free leg, driving his foot in Snake's face, his arm and his shoulder. It made no difference. Snake refused to release him. Once a snake has ensnared its prey, rarely does it release it. <laughs> this is it, Ace. We're going to burn to death. Together. What? Incineration will begin in two minutes. No. Damn it. Damn God. I think he said go. Sorry. Get off. Let me go, you monster. Okay, okay. Look, think about it this way. My company owns a wonderful hospital. It has excellent doctors. You're not wounded too seriously. I'm sure they can fix you up easily. You don't have to die. You can be saved. Just let me go. <laughs> Pathetic. Begging for your life. And Seven and Lotus began to speak. Shrimpay could hear tears in their voices and their words were strained. Snake, it's enough. You can stop now. Yes, he's right, Snake. You've done enough. Come on, Snake, let's go. Let's get out of here. You have to come with us. We have to leave together. Snake turned toward them. He coughed and blood splattered across the floor. And he smiled a sad sort of smile. I apologise, but... I'm afraid I can't do that. You best forget ab about me. You need to leave. Soon. I'm going to take him with me. Shut up! Be quiet! in the afterlife she she can forgive me now go go now you have to go incineration will begin in one minute god damn it shit we're out of time we have to go Seven ran towards the exit. Lotus followed him. But Junpei... Junpei couldn't move. There were white lines down Snake's cheeks where his tears had washed the blood away. He was broken, body and soul, and Junpei felt as if though half of his own heart had been torn out. His eyes stung, and he tried desperately to swallow the... to clear the lump in his throat. Junpei, what are you doing? You have to get out. Get out of here now! Shinpei's chest tightened, pulled taut by anger, misery, and a cold feeling of emptiness. Pure emotion surged through his heart, alongside a torrent of blood. He could feel it building, a tremendous wave growing taller and taller and taller. Then it broke crashing down with thunderous force onto his shaken, unprepared mind. Snake! Snake! Shinbei's rational mind was gone. He was driven by instinct now, and he launched himself across the floor at Snake and Ace. Or he tried to. Wait! Don't be an idiot, Shinbei! He felt a hand grab him from behind. It was seven. Before he had time to react, the larger man had pinned Junpei's arms to his sides and were hauling him bodily back to the door. No! No! I have to help Snake! 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 Get 
off of me! Let me go! Incineration will begin in 10 seconds. Ah! Seven. Six. Damn it! I don't got a choice, kid! Don't blame me for this, alright? Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Gates two and three are locked down. Beginning incineration. Shinpei felt Seven's fist bury itself deep in his stomach and his legs turned to mush. Seven scooped him up in the same motion and leapt through the door. It slammed shut behind them. Shinpei struggled to shaky feet and he glanced over to see Lotus only a short distance away. Shinpei ran to the door. There was a small window cut into it. Inside he could see Ace and Snake. Shit! Damn you all! Why? Why? Why me? I don't deserve this! Answer me! Answer me, Zero! Why? Why? Zero? Zero! He didn't know how much time had passed. He didn't know how long he stood there, in front of the incinerator. He looked to the side. Lotus's face was ashen. If not for the hand she'd put against the wall, Junpei didn't think she could have stood. Seven looked old and tired and used. His eyes stared at the floor, seeing nothing. Shinpei said nothing. He simply began to walk towards the open door in the hallway they'd come down earlier. Hey, hey! Wait, Shinpei! Shinpei, where are you going? He blinked when their voices broke the silence. He stopped. You stay here. I'll go get Santa and June. You gonna bring them here? How? Don't worry about that, just stay here and wait. Alright? He began to walk again. He looked over his shoulder and watched Seven and Lotus grow smaller and smaller. They stared back, not moving. He wasn't sure if they could. He turned around again. He knew where he was going. When they walked through the hallway early, earlier, he'd noticed an elevator at the end side of the hallway. If it still worked, then maybe... Before long, Junpei found himself in front of the elevator. Next to the door was a button with a triangle on it. He pushed it, and the door opened. Junpei was in a large hospital room. June! Santa? He kept calling and walked to the centre of the room. But try as he might, he couldn't find them. Ugh. Damn it! Where did they go? Increasingly frustrated and increasingly worried, Junpei left the large hospital room. He had no choice. He would have to look for them. Junpei's heart was heavy. He couldn't shake the feeling, but... There was a part of him that felt it would be wrong to, even if he could. With every step he took, his legs felt more and more like lead.
Some time later, Junpei found himself at the chapel. He stepped inside, expecting to find nothing. But there on the red carpet in the centre of the room... June! No, code names didn't matter anymore. She was canny. Canny! Shunbei cried her name and ran. Like lightning he ran across the room towards her. Oh man. Canny. He stumbled to a stop. He looked down at her body lying so still on the floor. He felt the icy grip of fear upon his heart. She was still. So very still. No. No, it couldn't be. It was impossible. Slowly, Junpei bent down toward her. His hands shook, and he felt very cold and very hot at the same time. He forced himself to look. Her back. Her back was moving. Slowly it rose and fell. Relief washed over him. Kenny! Shunpei reached down and gently, very gently, lifted her up. Kenny! Kenny! Are you alright? Junpei. Her face was pale and her lips were dry and cracked. Her eyes were blank and cloudy. They stared straight at Junpei, but saw nothing. Trembling, Junpei wrapped his arm around her back. She was cold. Very cold. Junpei tried to convince himself that it was only his imagination, but... She felt as though she was fading away. He could feel his heart pounding frantically in his chest. Oh man. Kenny. What the hell happened to you? You feel... Jumpy. I'm sorry. The voice was very faint. I might not make it. No way! No way am I gonna let you die! I'm gonna save you, I promise! Give me that I was crap. You're gonna see me again lots more times. You've... You've just gotta hang on. Alright, Kenny? Jumpy. Did you know? You meant... You meant a lot to me. When we were kids. I've liked you for a long time, Shunpei. But really, long time. Shunpei's vision had gone blurry. It took him to moment his eyes were f to realize his eyes were filled with tears. He could feel a piercing point of heat deep in his heart, like a white hot flame. He looked down. Kane. Game over. There was a crack of static from above his head and a voice spoke. Zero. You son of a bitch! Where are you hiding? Jinpei frantically scanned the ceiling for the source of the voice. I'm right here. I've always been close to you. What the hell are you talking about? No matter. I will tell you again. Game. Over. This game has ended. No. No it hasn't! I'm not gonna let it end yet! I'm gonna get out of here with Kenny. You can't. That is impossible. Why? 
because you chose the wrong path. The wrong path? That is correct. Your path was inevitable, however. Admit defeat. Where there is shadow, there is light. Where there is light, there is shadow. So it goes. What are you talking about? It matters not. The loser has been decided. I told you, I'm not gonna lose! No. You misunderstand. You haven't lost. I... have lost. What? Shunpei didn't have time to ponder what that meant before... He heard the door slam shut behind him. He spun around. There was no one there. Was it... Zero? Can he wait here? I'll be right back, I promise. She managed a single nod. Shinpei laid her back down gently and leapt for the door. He yanked it open and shot outside. No one. The hall was empty. There was nothing moving anywhere. Damn it! He didn't want to leave Kanye alone any longer than he had to, so Shinpei turned around and headed back to the chapel. Annie? She wasn't there. She wasn't anywhere. She'd been lying there on the floor just moments before. And now she was gone. Oh god. No, no. Where is she? Kenny? 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 Kenny! His cry split the heavens themselves. He screamed until his voice gave out. And he screamed some more. But there was nothing. No answer. His voice faded away, and all that remained was a cold, unfeeling silence. That was when he noticed it. A strange smell. One he'd smelled before. smell of a particular white smoke. Nine seconds later, Junpei's mind winked out. The end. Or is it? That was nine nine nine. 
safe ending. That was not the true ending, however. The true ending I have not yet found. I will work on something else, and then I will come back to this. For a game that I initially thought little of, that twist, fucking hell. I want to know what happens. And if you do too, I'd like you to please just make a mention of it or something. Show me that I really should continue and get the perfect ending, because otherwise I will just complete it by myself. And you know what? I won't even bother recording it, but I'm definitely going to get the good ending. Because fuck me. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Stay tuned for my next video. For the last time from 999. DTFN loves. <laughs>